aren't feeling something or it doesn't feel right in your body, um, just, sorry, I'm pinning my video. There we go. Um, just take a break, take child's pose, mountain pose. You can lay in Shavasana the whole hour and listen to the music, kind of whatever you need today. Um, but I'm here to guide you through it. So if you have any questions or you're not sure what to do, I'm gonna be demonstrating some of it on my mat, but I'll predominantly be using my voice to cue the movement since we're virtually. So um, with that said, again, gentleness is kind of the theme. So when you're in any posture and maybe you're feeling like you're pushing yourself or your breath gets a little more labored or you're really struggling um, to take a pause and to remember that um, trying to find a sense of gentleness and even a piece of like surrender to the posture um, today is kind of the theme. So using your breath to help you with that and uh, we'll have a great class. So with that said, we're going to start lying down on your mat. So if you want to lie on your back, close your eyes, you can bring your hands by your side or um, one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, whatever feels comfortable for you, but just go ahead and lay down and uh, we'll get started. If you are gonna follow along with music, you can go ahead and press the, press the play on the playlist as well. So just taking a moment today to be present with your body, to notice your breath, how it feels breathing in and breathing out, lying on your mat on this beautiful Saturday morning or Saturday evening. and giving yourself a moment to pause. Feeling the points of your body, touching your mat. And then taking some time to do a quick scan of where you're at today. Physically, if there's any points of stress or tension in your body, mentally or emotionally, anything you're carrying into practice today. Taking a nice deep breath in, feeling your belly rise, your lungs fill up with air. On your exhale, releasing it out your nose or out your mouth. On your next inhale, stretching your arms up and back above your head in a full body stretch. Yep, so you're stretching nice and long, toes flex back towards your face, arms are on resting on the ground behind you, fingers spread wide. And on your next inhale, you're gonna lengthen as long as you can. So really stretching energy through your fingers, toes pulling back towards your face. And on your exhale, releasing it all. So letting all of that tension, all of that stress go. We'll do that two more times. So on your inhale, stretching nice and long, really lengthening through your spine, lengthening through your arms flexing your knees up into your quads, and on your exhale, releasing completely. One more time, biggest inhale yet, maybe lengthening, giving a little bit more space through your spine, really energy sending out your fingers, pulling your toes back. And on your exhale, you're gonna hug your knees into your chest, wrapping your arms around your shins, pulling those knees in, and maybe rocking side to side or forward and back. Gently waking your body up today. Inhale here. 
And on your next exhale, either wrapping your peace fingers around your big toes or grabbing the outside edge of your feet and going into happy baby. So your feet are towards the ceiling and your knees are pulling down towards your armpits. Yep, you all got it. You can rock side to side if that feels good. Maybe play around with straightening one leg or the other. Inhale, and on your next exhale, just hugging your knees back into your chest one more time, giving yourself a hug. And then bring the soles of your feet to the width of your mat, keeping a bend in your knees. Yep, everybody's good. Yep, so your feet are on the mat, your knees are lifted. You'll just gently drop your knees to the right. On your exhales, on your inhale, coming back through center. On the exhale, dropping to the left. Inhale, coming back through center. And this windshield wiper motion. So you can continue this with your own breath as long or as short as you'd like to make them. And then after your next time to the left, coming back to center, just allow your knees to fall towards one another so they're resting together and then bring one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. If it's more comfortable, you can always stretch your legs out long in front of you. And we're just gonna move through some breathing exercises together. So taking a nice big inhale in through your nose, starting at your belly, really feel the wall of your belly rise, filling up with air and then moving up through your lungs, your chest is expanding, chest lifting, all the way up to your shoulders. And on your exhale, you can open up your mouth, press the air out if it feels comfortable to make an audible sound. Really pressing it all the way out, lowering your rib cage, lowering your belly back down to your spine. Two more times, just like that. Inhale, filling up your belly, growing long, longest breath of the day. Chest grows wider all the way up. And when you get to the top, maybe sipping in a little bit more air. On your exhale, again, pressing out your mouth, exhaling completely. One more time, biggest breath yet. Again, filling your belly first, so your belly rises and your belly expands. Your chest is expanding. Maybe sip a little bit more at the top. And this time, instead of breathing out your mouth, you're gonna keep your lips closed and press the air through your nose on your exhale. Allowing yourself to return to normal breath, knowing that that ujjayi breath, the inhale and exhale in and out your nose is what will guide you through your practice today. So for the next few moments, if you'd like, I invite you to set an intention for today's practice totally optional, but maybe something you'd like to work on, maybe something you'd like to remind yourself of, something you're grateful for, something that's brought you joy this week. Taking whatever intention you set, breathe that in, knowing that we're gonna approach our intentions today with a sense of gentleness. On your exhale, letting it go. And on your next inhale, bringing your palms of your hand back down to the mat and then bringing your legs straight up above your hips. So you're in waterfall pose. Yep, everybody looks good. And we'll just begin to warm up our core, up our center. So you'll begin just doing clockwise circles with your hips. You can keep them really nice and small, but engaging through your lower abdomen and making sure that your lower back is staying firmly grounded on the mat. You can take these as fast or as slow as you like. Um, I recommend going a little bit slower than you think, um, and even focusing on keeping them small. If you'd like to go big and really challenge your core, go for it. 
but keeping nice straight legs if that's comfortable for you just begin to circle them nice and slow building a little warmth and a little fire in your core After your next cycle, we'll go the other direction. Maybe switching up the pace. If you did them really fast the first time, maybe slowing it down. Again, really thinking of engaging, tucking that pelvis in, engaging through your core and your lower abdomen. And then on your next exhale, releasing that, hugging your knees back into your chest, and we'll just begin to rock gently back and forth. So if it's comfortable, you can grab behind your thighs instead of behind your shins, and you'll begin to rock back and forth. So forward and backwards until you rock yourself all the way up to boat pose. So you're balancing on your sit bones. Your chest is lifted nice and high. Your shins can stay parallel to the ground. You can bring your toes to the mat. Or you can extend your legs up if that's where you're at this morning. But you're here, shins parallel, arms are lifted. We'll hold here just for a few breaths. Looking up, gaze is lifted, chest is nice and broad. A long breath in here. And on your exhale, crossing your legs, sitting up nice and tall. Inhale, reaching your arms up towards the sky. Exhale, bringing your hands down to heart center. All right, I want to pause really quick. Can everyone hear me okay? Just give me a thumbs up. We're all good. Volume's good. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> all right, on your next inhale, you're just going to roll your wrists out. We're going to do some downward dogs and different weight bearing exercises. So it's always great just to bring a little movement into your wrist before you do anything like that. So just circling them up and then going the other direction on your way down. When you get there, just bringing your hands to your side and we'll circle our neck really gently, nice and slow, clockwise to the, to the right. I don't know, maybe that's counterclockwise. And then going the other direction. Feeling anywhere that might need a little extra love, you can always pause. All right, and coming back to neutral neck, you're gonna inhale, lifting that left arm up towards the sky. And on your exhale, just gently bending over towards the side, a nice long side stretch, keeping that left hip grounded into the mat. You can come down to your elbow if that's comfortable for you, but again, really making sure that left hip point is pushing down into the mat. A nice long line all the way through your fingertips. You can look up or down to the down to the ground, down to your mat, whatever's comfortable. Really breathing into that left side body. On your next inhale, coming back up through center. Exhale, bringing that right arm up and over. Again, keeping that right hip point really grounded. Inhale, coming back up through center. And on your exhale, you're just gonna shift forward over your knees, coming to a tabletop position. I'm gonna scoot back here so you guys can see me. So we're gonna warm up our spine, moving through some cat-cow postures. So on your inhale, you're gonna lift your pelvis, tilt your pelvis up towards the sky, chest is pulling down towards the mat, gaze is lifted. On your exhale, tucking your pelvis down, back arches in cat posture. Again, moving through these on your inhale, chest lifts, gaze lifts, pelvis is tucked up. Exhale, back arches, pelvis tucks. Move through a few more of these on your own with your own breath. You can circle your hips or circle your rib cage, whatever feels good.
And then after your next set, after your next cat posture, come to a neutral spine. And from here, you're gonna extend that right leg back so that your toes are on the mat. And then keeping the left hand on the mat, you're gonna rotate your left foot and lift that right arm up towards the sky. Let me face you. So you should be open here in gate pose. Your right leg is back on the ground, right arm is up towards the sky. You can lift your gaze. Or if it's comfortable, maybe stretch that right arm up and over your head. A nice long line all the way from your right foot through your right fingertips. Really not making sure not to collapse into that left shoulder, but lifting up through it. If your arm's over your head, bring it back up to that neutral lifted position. Closing that right shoulder down, bringing the right foot in, back to your tabletop. We'll go to the other side. So extending that left foot back, rotating that right foot 90 degrees. Inhale, lifting that left hand up towards the sky. And then if it's comfortable on your exhale, stretching that left arm up and over your head. One nice long line, again, from your knife side edge of your foot all the way through your fingertips. Your gaze can be down towards your hand, straight out, or underneath that left armpit, whatever feels comfortable. On your inhale, bringing that left hand back up if it was extended, closing the left hand back down, bring the left leg in, you're back in your tabletop. You're gonna tuck your back toes if they're not. And on your inhale, you're gonna lift your tabletop so that your knees are just hovering a couple inches off the ground. So you're here in a nice flat back, knees hovered off the ground. Inhale here. And on your exhale, nice and slow, moving from your hips, lift up and back to downward dog. So you can keep your knees really, really bent here in your first downward dog of the day. So we'll talk about this posture a little bit as you hold it. So really focusing on your breath, making sure your fingers are spread nice and wide, giving yourself a really great base. And that your hands are so important in this posture so that you're not dumping all of your weight into the back of your wrists, that you're actively pressing through your fingertips, through your knuckles, and it'll take a lot of the pressure off of your wrists in this pose. So it's your first one. If you'd like to kind of pedal out your feet, maybe bend one leg, bend the other. And if you have really tight hamstrings, it's always okay to keep your knees bent in this pose. All right, on your next inhale, lift your heels up so you're in your downward dog on your tiptoes. And on your exhale, you're gonna use that cat arch and roll forward to a high plank, nice and slow. See how slow you can exhale and how slow you can roll forward. And then on your inhale, lifting from your hips up and back to downward facing dog. We'll do this two more times. So inhale, lifting your heels up and you're gonna cat arch your back nice and slow all the way forward to a high plank. And then on your exhale from your hips, lifting up and back to downward dog. One more time, just like this. Inhale, lifting your heels up rolling forward on your exhale lifting your hips up and back to downward facing dog all right on your inhale lift up on your heels and look forward and on your exhale you're just going to try to tiptoe your way with straight legs as far as you can get and then when you need to bend your knees walk all the way up to a forward fold so in your forward fold keep your knees really really bent and then bring your chest and your rib cage all the way to meet your thighs. So however deep that needs to be. And when you're in that forward fold, relax your head over completely and grab opposite elbows. You can kind of rock side to side if that's comfortable. Inhale here. And on your exhale, slowly rolling up toward the standing position. On your inhale, reaching your arms up towards the sky. 
well here. Okay, cool. On your exhale, bringing your hands to heart center. So we're just gonna move through um, standing crescent. So inhale, reach your arms up towards the sky, interlace your fingers. So you're here, but you can keep your pointer fingers pointing up and the rest are interlaced. So you're here standing nice and tall, feet them together. You're gonna inhale, stretch nice and long. And as you do this, really tuck your pelvis forward. So engage through your lower abdomen. You're tucking your pelvis nice and low. And on your exhale, you'll bend slightly to the right. So on your inhale, stretching a little longer. On your exhale, maybe bending slightly to the right. If you feel any pain in your lower back, come back to center and really make sure you're tucking that pelvis and engaging through your lower abdomen. You shouldn't feel any pinching or pain in your lower back during this posture. One more breath in here. Exhale, maybe bend a little bit deeper. On your inhale, coming back up to center. Exhale fully. And then we'll go to the other side. So inhale, stretching nice and tall, resetting, engaging through your quads, engaging through your glutes. On your exhale, bending over towards the left. Again, trying to find a sense of gentleness and a sense of surrender in this posture, which is very difficult for me because it's very challenging. Um, but if you can find a place to look in front of you and just think solely about your breath, finding a sense of ease in some of the more challenging postures. One more breath in, lengthening nice and long. Exhale, maybe bending a little deeper. On your inhale, coming back up to center. Exhale, coming to a forward fold. On your inhale, coming to a half lift. We're gonna move through sun salutation A. So on your exhale, placing your hands down, stepping your feet back to high plank. You have two options here, so you can either Take chaturanga where you lower halfway, or you're always welcome to drop your knees, lower all the way to your belly. On your exhale, inhale, lifting your chest up to cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, tucking your toes, lifting your hips up and back to downward dog. All right, so we're nice and warmed up. We're gonna move through a few flows together. So on your next inhale, lifting that right leg up towards the sky. On your exhale, pulling that knee in through your chest, looking forward and stepping that right foot in between your front hands. On your inhale, we're gonna to come to high crescent. So lifting your arms up towards the sky. Exhale here, keeping that back heel lifted, really engaging through the back leg, energy shooting out that back heel. And on your next exhale, we're going to open to warrior two. So your right foot, or right leg and right arm are forward. Chest is open and shoulders are square just above your hips. Full cycle of breath here. On your inhale, we're going to reach forward slightly. On your exhale, bring your right elbow to your right thigh. Extend that left arm up and over your head. If it's comfortable for you, you can always bring that right hand inside that right foot. Really pressing through that outside back edge of the back foot. Inhale here. Exhale fully. On your next inhale, we're gonna come back up to warrior two. Exhale, straighten through that front leg. Lift the right arm towards the sky, peaceful warrior. That back hand can rest on your back thigh, maybe wrap behind your back. All right, from here, you're in peaceful warrior. Inhale, and on your exhale, you're gonna cycle those hands back down, framing the front foot, you're in a high lunge, and then you're gonna step that right foot back and you have the option to flow through or to lift your hips up and back to downward dog.
In your downward dog, take a nice full breath in. Exhale, press the air out your mouth, letting all of that go. We're gonna do that whole sequence on the left side. So on your next inhale, lifting that left foot up towards the sky. On your exhale, looking forward, stepping that left leg up however many times you need until you're in this high lunge. On your inhale, lifting your arms up towards the sky, you're in high crescent lunge. That front knee is tracking directly over that front ankle, lifting through that back knee. Inhale, grow tall. On your exhale, opening up to warrior two. Thinking of pressing that left knee open so that your knee is almost pointing towards that pinky toe of the left foot. A nice full cycle of breath here. Finding a moment of pause in the pose. On your inhale, shifting forward slightly. On your exhale, bringing that left elbow either to your left side or inside that left foot and then stretching that right arm up and over your ear. Making sure you're not collapsing that right shoulder down so you're keeping a nice open shoulder. Keeping your elbow up on your leg really helps maintain that. On your next inhale, coming back up through warrior two. On your exhale, straightening that front leg, lifting that left hand up towards the sky. Right hand comes back behind you or on that back right leg. Little to no weight in that back hand. Hey, you all look great. All right, inhale, growing nice and tall. On your exhale, putting a bend in that front knee, cycling your hands down to frame that front foot. Again, you're gonna step that left foot back to high plank, and you have the option to either flow through or to meet in downward dog. All right, we're gonna move through one more kind of energizing flow together before we begin to cool down a bit. So on your inhale, lift that right leg up towards the sky. On your exhale, pulling that knee forward towards your nose, come to that high lunge. Exhale here. On your inhale, coming up to high crescent. Exhale, opening up to warrior two. Taking a full breath in here. Exhaling out your nose. On your inhale, you're gonna straighten through that front leg. You can step that back foot in slightly if you need to. And then on your exhale, you're gonna reach forward, nice and long, keeping your shoulders nice and square. On your exhale, rotating into triangle pose. So left hand towards the sky, right hand can find your thigh or your calf or maybe your toes. And in this pose, really think about having all four points, your two hip points and the two shoulder points as if they were against a wall. So really that left shoulder is nice and open. All right, one more breath in here. Exhale fully. On your inhale, we're gonna come back up to neutral. And on your exhale, put a bend back into that front knee in warrior two. On your inhale, you're gonna straighten into that front leg. We're gonna rotate so that you're sideways on your mat right now. And then keep your toes out about a 45 degree angle, heels are in. Inhale your arms up. You're in kind of the star position. And on your exhale, put a bend into your knees, coming into goddess pose. You can keep your arms in cactus here. Nice, open, broad chest. Inhale here. On your exhale, we're gonna forward fold into a wide-legged forward fold. But as you do, turn your toes in and your heels out so that you're a little bit pigeon-toed. 
Yeah, so you're moving from goddess into forward fold. Legs are spread nice and wide. You can keep your hands on the ground, maybe grab opposite elbows. All right, coming up to the flat back here. So we're in your wide forward fold. You're in a flat back. You're gonna put your left hand down on the ground. Inhale, stretching that right arm up towards the sky in a twist. On your exhale, closing that hand back down, you're gonna walk yourself forward so that your right knee is up towards the front. You're in that high runner's lunge. Planting your hand, just step that right foot back and we'll meet in downward facing dog. So again, on your exhale, you can lower into chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, hips lift high, downward facing dog. Maybe pedal out your feet. Maybe take a nice long cleansing breath here as we move to do that whole thing on the left side. So on your next inhale, lifting that left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, pulling that knee towards your chest, towards your nose, stepping it up in between those front hands. Inhale, lifting your arms up towards the sky. Again, front knee is directly over that front ankle. Energy shooting off that back leg. On your exhale, opening to warrior two. Gazing over that left fingertips. On your next inhale, straightening into that front leg, you can again step that back foot in slightly. And then on your inhale, you're gonna reach forward. Exhale, rotating, placing that left hand inside the left leg, right arm lifts towards the sky. Your gaze can either be up towards that hand or down towards the mat. We'll hold here for a few breaths, but again, really trying to keep all four points, the backs of your shoulders, and your hips in one nice plane. So like they're against a wall. Everybody looks great. All right, on your inhale, coming back up to center. Exhale, putting a bend into that front knee, coming to warrior two. And then from here, we'll straighten back into that leg. We're gonna turn towards the side, doing that same goddess pose. So inhale, stretching your arms up towards the sky in that kind of star position. Exhale, bending into your knees and your elbows. Your arms are in cactus. Your chest is lifted and you're engaging through those shoulder blades. So really squeezing those shoulder blades together. Inhale here. On your exhale, straightening through the legs, forward folding into a wide leg forward fold. Again, maybe turning your toes in slightly and your heels slightly out to give yourself a little bit more space in this posture. On your inhale, coming up to flat back. Exhale, placing that right hand down on the ground, left hand lifts up towards the sky. On your inhale, bringing that left hand back down, walking yourself forward so you're in a nice high lunge here. Again, placing your hands nice and firm. You can step that left foot back and you have the option to flow through or to meet a downward dog. When you get to downward dog, you're welcome to take a child's pose. So dropping your knees to the width of your mat, bringing your toes together to kiss, maybe stretching your arms forward, or if your shoulders need to break, bringing your hands back by your hips and giving your shoulders and wrists a break. Taking a nice long breath in, again, filling your belly, filling your lungs. Exhale, pressing it all out, letting that last flow go.
And when you're ready, pressing back up into your hands, coming to one last downward facing dog. As we move into some cool down stretching, on your inhale, lift that right leg up. On your exhale, stepping that right hand in between your hands, so frame that front leg again. And then drop into that back knee, and inhale, lift your arms up towards the sky. If it's comfortable, you can interlock, interlace your fingers and just press into that front thigh if that feels good. Or some people like to take their arms up and back and really open their chest up towards the sky. Whatever serves you today. From here, whatever uh, version you've taken, bring your fingertips back down to the mat. You're gonna walk that left foot over behind the left wrist and then place that right knee behind the right wrist. So you're moving into pigeon pose. So again, right knee is behind the right wrist. If you have any knee issues or this isn't comfortable, simply flip over to your back and do a figure four stretch. If you need help with that, just wave your hand. But you're here in pigeon, your left leg is stretched out nice and long behind you. You can either stay lifted or walk down to your elbows or maybe stretch those arms out in front of you. We'll hold here for about 10 breaths, so really get comfortable. And again, this is a really challenging posture to find peace and to find surrender in. Our hips hold so much tension, especially when we sit all the time. So if you can really challenge your breath to breathe into any space that's holding that tension and on your exhale, maybe letting just the tiniest bit of it go. Finding maybe just a sense of surrender in this posture. On your next inhale, if you're lying down, lift coming back up to your palms. Nice and slow. You're gonna lift through those back toes and then stretch that right foot back to meet the left. If you're able, just step that left foot directly up. If you need to go to downward dog and lift that back left leg, go for it. But we're just gonna move into that low lunge here. So left knees forward, right legs back. Inhale, stretching your arms up towards the sky. On your exhale, you can either interlace your fingers, press into that front thigh, or again, lifting your arms up and coming into those cactus arms, really opening your chest and gaze up towards the ceiling. All right, from here, whatever version you took, bring your fingertips back down to the mat and gently walk that left foot behind the right wrist, or yeah, and left knee behind the left wrist and extend that back leg out long and then move into whatever version of pigeon you found on the opposite side. Again, giving yourself the space to approach this gently. And if it's not comfortable knowing, you can always flip over and take a figure four stretch. Few more breaths here.
And on your next inhale, coming back onto your hands. So you're here in pigeon pose. What I want you to do is just to shift into that left hip and swing that right leg up and around if that's comfortable. So you're here, you can stretch both legs out long in front of you and then bring a bend into that knee, right knee. You can either keep it here or if it helps you balance yourself, you can cross it up and over. You can also bend um, this left leg too if that helps you feel more stable. But on your inhale, lift that left arm up towards the sky. Your right arm is gonna come right behind your right hip point. And on your exhale, bringing that left elbow to the right knee in a seated twist. So again, on your inhale, thinking nice, tall spine, really lengthening up through those sit bones. And then on your exhale, maybe bending a little bit deeper. Not putting too much strain on your neck to look behind you. On an inhale, coming back to center, we're gonna straighten that right leg out, put a bend in the left knee. Again, you can keep it here, cross it over, or put a bend into that um, right leg if that's comfortable. So on your inhale, stretching that right arm up, left hand comes behind the left hip. Exhale, bringing the right elbow outside the left leg and coming to a seated twist. Again, inhale, maybe lengthening a little bit taller. Exhale, gently and lovingly, maybe bend, twisting a little deeper. On your inhale, coming back to center. If your leg is crossed over, uncross it, and then put a bend into both knees. Grab behind your thighs, and then just cat arch your back all the way down so that you're lying on your back, but your knees are still bent and the soles of your feet are in the mat. So you're lying here on the ground, on your mat. Knees are bent. We're gonna move through bridge posture as we prepare for our Shavasana. So um, reach forward and if your fingertips can slightly graze the backs of your heels, they're in a relatively good, good spot. Um, and just make sure that your feet are also placed like in line with your hips. So you don't want them too wide and you don't necessarily want them touching either. So on your inhale, tuck into your pelvis, lifting your hips up towards the sky. So your shoulder points are on the ground, hands are pressing into the mat, soles of your feet are pressing into the mat and your hips are lifted in bridge pose. So inhale fully here and then exhale completely. And when you exhale, start to roll your spine back down towards the mat and try if you can to wait to take your inhale until your hips completely touch the mat. We'll do that two more times. So on your inhale, tucking into your pelvis, lifting your hips up towards the ceiling. Exhale fully here. And then close your lips and slowly roll down to one vertebrae at a time until your hips touch the mat and then allowing your inhale to rush in. One more time, inhale, tucking into your hips, lifting them up towards the sky, really pressing through the soles of your feet. Exhale fully at the top, and then slowly rolling down all the way until your hips meet the mat. And when you do, allow your inhale to rush in, and on your next exhale, hug your knees into your chest. Maybe rock side to side a little bit. Anything else you need to do before we move into Shavasana? I'll give you a few moments. All right, and if you're still hugging your knees into your chest, maybe lifting up and giving your knees a little kiss, giving your body a little gratitude for this practice. 
And then when you're ready, extending your legs lengthwise on the mat, arms come down to your side, palms are lifted up towards the ceiling in a gesture of receiving. And then allowing any tension in your legs to release so that your toes roll out slightly. Maybe scrunching your face up and then on your exhale, letting it go, unfurrowing your eyebrow, relaxing your jaw as we move into Shavasana. So if you've been to yoga class before, you've probably heard that this is the most important posture that you can give yourself. That we do all of these physical asanas and movement to be able to lie there in stillness, to quiet our mind and to reconnect with our breath. So know that you have the next few minutes here on your mat, here with your breath, that any thoughts they may arise to acknowledge them and to let them pass and to give yourself a few minutes to just be. All right, gently maybe bringing a little movement into your fingers and your toes. And when you're ready, keeping your eyes closed, just putting a bend into your knees and rolling to a comfortable side. You can use your arm as a pillow. And so when I was thinking about today's class and just about gentleness and kind of finding a gentleness within yourself, um, I was reminded of this quote that says, the moon does not fight. It attacks no one. It does not worry. It does not try to crush others. However, it keeps its course, but by its very nature, it gently influences. What other body could pull an entire ocean from shore to shore? The moon is faithful to its nature and its gentle power is never diminished. And it just reminded me that when we give ourselves the space to be gentle with ourselves and to return to who we really are, that a lot of times by following that part of ourselves, that's when we have the most pull and the most power, as the quote says. So in your own time, keeping your eyes closed and using the strength of your arms, just lift yourself up to a seated position. And when you get there, you can inhale, reach your arms up towards the sky, taking your time. On your exhale, bring your thumbs towards your third eye center. So placing them on your forehead, just between your brows and gratitude pose. And I'm so grateful for this morning and for this practice. I'm grateful for technology, being able to bring so many people that I love together on my computer screen. Um, 
And I'm grateful for the ability to move with all of you today. So pulling that gratitude down to my heart center, I close my practice with the light and love in me, honors the light and love in each and every one of you. Namaste. If you guys want to unmute, you can, but let me pause this recording.